Ever, you know, Janet, give a round of applause. Yeah. So there you go, Ever. Um, so my name is RC. We're, today we're going to go over integration of WCP and VEX Pro parts into FRC robots. If you have any questions, just raise your hand or like blurt it out, whatever. I'm pretty relaxed. I guess we'll start the slides off. First one, we got Rick Ross, the boss here. So my name is RC, if you didn't know. I started first in 2006 with FRC Team 1323. This is back when we would go to a regional, win zero matches, and lose eight. So fun times, you know, so start from the bottom. So I was a Woody Flowers Award finalist in 2012 at the Central Valley Regional. Um, I own West Coast Products. Come on in, man. Hey, there's some free snacks in the back, though. Come on, come on in. You know, you're lost. But uh, yeah, so I started, um, I started West Coast Products in the fall of 2012. My hobbies, I love hooping. I do robots like all of you guys. And I love eating food. I got to talk about that. So <laughs> next one. So the goals of West Coast Products. So we kind of, we kind of have some, some solid goals. So our goal is to provide teams like the coolest components ever. So one of the main reasons why I started the company was I wanted to make the most craziest, coolest stuff possible for teams. And we end parts that we use on our robot. So pretty much that, make sure beginners and elite level teams have parts and uh, pretty much make products that fill the market gap. Because every year I'm sure you guys build a robot and you're like, I wish I could buy XYZ or I wish uh, this was made. So. That's what it was for us. I know all the mentors in the back, when we started making robot parts, we're like, man, I wish we could just buy sprockets or I wish we could make gears or, I, I know you guys are younger, but aluminum gears back in 2012 were not a thing. Everyone's like, RC, you're crazy. Why are you making aluminum gears? How many of you guys like the 775 Pro motor? Yeah, yeah, maybe some of you guys. Okay, it's definitely our favorite motor. Um, we spent three and a half years developing it and making it for you guys. So I know we used it multiple years and the, guy, and the guys in the back were like, why do we even, make this nobody's going to use it and then now you know everybody uses it so so it's a cool things right so um what do we sell so we sell pretty much everything that you know we, we you can imagine we sell belts pulleys gears gearboxes hardware motors sprocks and chain wheels and hubs framing you name it we try to sell it and if you have cool ideas please feel free to email me i love selling cool stuff so if you have any questions concerns let me know so i guess the first main topic we're going to hit is purchasing versus machining. So we're gonna use our team as an example. I guess Citrus will also be a good example of this. So our average budget for the robot is between 10 and 20 grand. I know that's a lot different than some of you guys out here, or, maybe, or you guys have a bigger budget, depending on what team you are. So this is one of the main things that we try to highlight. So for our shop, we're pretty loaded. I'm not gonna lie, we have all the cool toys. So we have CNC machines, we have mills, lathe, router, manual lathe, mills, and various other tools. So the question to you guys is, so why would our team one, three, two, three, buy parts. If we can make everything. Time, that's a good one. What else? Probably the number one thing though, but yeah, what, what else? Yeah, yeah, we, let's, say, let's, say, let's say this is our budget. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we definitely got the money. Let's say we got like, we, we fundraise about 100 grand a year. So like we fundraise, I make sure the kids work hard. We have the money, it's not a big deal. So if you have the money, why do we still buy parts? And we have the machines too, it's not like, we don't have any machines, no money, whatever. So if we have all the items, why do we purchase parts beyond time? Time's a good reason why, but what else? Any, any takers? Nothing? Quiet, you sound like my kids, man. Quiet crowd. Anything? No, nothing? No, no one? What's up? You still gotta buy material? So it's all cost material, yeah. What's up, man? That's true, too. There's some parts that are a pain in the butt to make that we don't do. Zach, what do you think? You don't think? Oh. Gary, anything? No comment. No comment? Damn, we got some Trumps in the back, man. <laughs> All right, so it's time and integration. So this is something huge for teams that I think uh, I feel like we missed out on for a long time, and so did teams. So the number one thing is it boils down to time and integration. So dude nailed it, time is number one. So this is probably the most important resource you have. If you get your robot done early, what else can you do with it? You can practice, you can program, you can do whatever. I'm pretty sure, so this year, our complete robot was done by week four. Everything you see on that machine out there this weekend was done by week four. It was kind of cool because we don't get done week four, week five. Like, we just don't. It's not something that happens for us. So for us, it was a cool feeling because since we were done early, we can make more stuff, we can practice, and our kids need a lot, a lot of practice, sadly. So that's one that we, we hit on. And the next thing is the integration, right? So the problem not only is your time, but when you can buy parts or make them or like kind of like design around them, you can uh, 
you can minimize intricate parts. So there's a lot of components that we spend a ton of time on. Elias, how long do we spend on sprockets? Remember back in the day? Yeah, so for those 18T, 16T, 22T sprockets you buy now in HUD form, we would spend two weeks straight out of our build season cutting, chopping, broaching, and milling all those sprockets. Nowadays, it's like, dude, we can buy them? Hell yeah, Look, we're done, you know? So it, it's true though. There's, I think there's a lot of times where teams get in a, in, in a fixation where you have to make everything or I don't wanna buy this because it's too expensive. If for nowadays, even if I start a new rookie team, my number one thing would be to fundraise, fundraise, fundraise so I can buy the things that I can, right? It's a huge thing. Um, so nowadays, so all these products, the sprockets, bearing blocks, pulleys, wheels, and gearboxes, at one point we made everything. We made, at one point in time, we even made our own aluminum gears. And we spent three to four weeks making them. It's not worth the time. I think Poof did it one year too. So it, it's definitely not worth the time that you're going to spend in the integration. And then the hidden benefit that people don't realize uh, purchasing is you save design time and high reliability most of the time. So if you can if you can design around something, you don't have to CAD that component. We used to CAD our own gears, our own sprockets, our own stuff. So one of the reasons why we did start the company and we do make cool stuff, and that one reason why we work with Vex Pro is we want to save a lot of integration time because you guys are kids, right? How many of you guys know SolidWorks? Hey, a lot of you guys. Hey, you got a good group out here today. But the thing is, do you just how, how much time would it take you to, to draw this rocket, to draw all these gearbox that you, can now, now, that you can now buy, right? It's a huge time saver integration cycle. So does anyone have questions on like why it's important to buy or the time or the integration or anything? Nothing? I talk really fast. So. What's up, man? How about delivery? That You know what? That is that is something you got to plan around, right? I know for all the California teams, we try to ship one day. What's up, man? Yeah. What kind, of, what kind of stuff do I use all the time? Right, right. Like, if you know you're building, there's some safe things you can buy, right? Like, wheels are pretty much a hard one, I assume, but you can buy aluminum tubing, probably 18T or 16 sprockets. You know you're going to go West Coast Drive or something. There's certain things you can buy that are safe. Motor controllers you can probably buy uh, before the tariffs kick in, you know. So you can probably buy quite a few things. So um, so the next question is, why would you want to use Vex Pro parts and WC parts or WCP parts over anybody else's? So for me, um, I think the big thing for me is compatibility across all of our products. We try to make products that, that just work. I love the Apple model. I know we bought a Markford printer. I know some of you other guys have some. But the reason why we love the printer is it just works. You know, you don't got to haggle with it. You don't got to mess with it. Parts get printed. Ease of use, lower lower cost, made by the pros. I know a lot of Vex Pro parts are made by, like, people that top-notch people in FRC. So, uh, and then what else? And then we use some of the top-level teams. I know this year for the Einstein team, you got Citrus, you had us, and 2 4 We use a lot of the components built by it, so it's kind of one of the reasons. And then, so I guess we'll start with the first thing. Uh, one of the things that I see teams struggle with always is the chassis stuff. So I kind of reckon, you know, obviously we're going to go the Versa chassis because, you know, so versatile. Hey, hey, versatile? No? No laughs? Okay. I was hoping it was going to get there. But the basic building blocks of a Versa chassis is the Versa frame gusts, Versa blocks cams, gearboxes, wheels, whatever. One of the reasons why we started selling the Versa chassis is we would have teams come up to us and be like, we can't make that. That's a poof drivetrain. They spent a million hours machining it. We'd be like, well, you know, probably they did spend a lot of time making it. So we got to a point where we sell everything that you can make without a whole saw, with, with, with no CNC machine. Whole saw, drills, hacksaw, whatever you need. So that was kind of our main goal behind the Versa chassis. And we recommend to a lot of the teams, if you don't opt out of the kit apart normally in your veteran team, you may want to take a look at it. It's not that bad. Um, Guys in the back, how long do we take to make one for the MCC? Because we make the MCC every year. A lot of the guys in the back do a lot of the work for it. How long does it take to make one? Right, yeah, for the, for the first chassis. About a day? Yeah, one day. Yeah, so when we when we hear teams that are struggling with making a drive train a day, even even our kids, like we have, we're making two off-season bots, and our kids like, man, dude, making the chassis super hard. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, we make it a day normally. So, But I do recommend taking a look at some of the first chassis stuff, why it's important. So. How do you guys in the, in the audience, why is it important to get the drivetrain done in like a day or two? What's the benefit? What's up? Yeah, allows, allows programmers to experiment. What else? Yeah, it's always good to have one. What else, guys? Anything else crazy? What's up? Yeah. 
Yeah, you can reuse it. I think every game across different dimensions, but yeah, you can definitely reuse it. I know we have one or two laying around that we just use to beat up, start the season, start prototyping. So, um, I guess the next thing is wheels, maker to buy. I know for a long time in our generation cycle, we used to make every single wheel. Do pain in the butt. You guys see some of the stuff up here. I guess I can pass some of this stuff around, but we can start the train here. If you guys want to pass it around, start moving around. But we used to make, I, I think this year we made this wheel. And I think all the kids complained about it. They're like, RC, well, how are we spending weeks making wheels? I'm like, I don't know, bro, because we can't buy them. So they all, they all look at me funny, like making wheels is like outrageous. But back in the day, all we did was make wheels. So we do sell a bunch of options, traction wheels, pneumatic options, Colson's, Omni's, Mechanums. I wouldn't use Mechanums, but. You know, that's up to you guys. You guys, you pass it around and stuff. Um, anyone got any questions about the wheel stuff, what we offer, kind of the integration cycle, why is it better to buy? Um, does anyone make their own wheels here? No? No? A? No? You don't make them? That is a very good question. Well, okay, so to answer the question, so the question is why you're losing out on the experience of making wheels, right? Is what you're asking or you're saying? Yeah, so like if you had to make custom wheels, that one point, so you make Right. Well, okay, so while we do machine a bunch of stuff, so we have all the machines to do it and we have the knowledge to do so, and, and sometimes we'll make them, but the reason why we don't make them is because back to the main principle, time and integration. It just takes so much time. It takes us two and a half weeks to make wheels. Too much, for us, time is money. Time should be money for all you guys too. Time is money, right? What's up, guys? Yeah. Don't worry, you're not missing out. You don't worry, you're not missing out on mechanics. You can, you probably don't want to use them. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you're not missing out on anything. Any other thing about the wheels? Anything? Questions? Concerns? Comments? Nothing. All right, uh, motor controllers, I don't got anything crazy to say about it. Um, we use all the SRXs and Victor SPXs. I know for a long time, guys, I used to haggle Citrus, aka Mike, about using SRXs. And, and they've recently started using them and they're pretty much, and he says they're worth the money at the time. So a lot of teams come up to us and they'll email us like, why do we want to spend 80 bucks on an SRX? If you think about it, when I first started a team, we used to buy Victor, Victor 8H4s or 8H3s for $120. And all they did was nothing special. They didn't do any current control. They didn't know the cool features you see nowadays. So while speed control technology has gone down, the cool thing about these is you can put them in the CAN bus. You can daisy chain them. You can run the encoder on the Talon, which is a huge plus. I recommend doing it. And I don't know, just in general, cool stuff, man. I recommend using the controller, taking a look at them. Um, does anyone have a question about this motor controller line stuff? SRX is definitely the better one. But it costs more. It's like 80 bucks. But you can, if you, let's say you have a three SIM drive turn, right? or say you have six sims total or six mini sims, uh, you can run your first SRX as the encoder one and you can run the SPXs in follower mode and you can save like a hundred bucks. So that's kind of a good thing. If you use that SPXs, you can use them in follower, but they don't take any sensors unless it's a gyro, I believe. So it's kind of a weird buy. Yes. It's like, um, if you don't know closed loop position control, you probably have to look it online, but basically it allows you to go to like a certain set point, like a certain angle or a certain position. It's like, it tells the motor where to go basically. That's why I would, best way to describe it. Um, Spartan board, I think we used Citrus as a picture of today, but basically another cool product that we sell, we just highlighted it cause like our friends on 971 made it and then uh, Citrus is the only team that uses it sadly, but you know, it's a cool product to have out there. Um, versus framing and gusset, this is kind of where like teams, I think, struggle. Uh, a lot of teams use like T-slot or like random materials or angle iron or whatever. We sell a ton of stuff. It's great for prototyping. Um, one thing that we learned that we struggled with was, um, everybody, okay, everybody asked me like, hey guys, how'd you guys come up with a 1323 or poof intake? Poof intake, yeah, poof intake. So, um, how did you came out? So we, we have one out here today. If you guys pass around, take a look at it. So we have, we have this sucker out here today. So this is like the original intake that we had for the season. So um, everybody asked me, hey, RC, how'd you guys come up with this stuff? Or like, what do you guys use for prototyping? And the way we kind of explained about it is we use a lot of versa framing for all of our prototypes. We use it on our robot too. Some, some parts make on the robot. Um, we use different hole patterns, so we don't use versa framing exactly, but we use the aluminum tubing. So the reason why versa framing is good, it's great for prototyping, quick assembly, precision holes. Man, it, it sucks to make holes. I know we drill a ton, so it needs a lot of work. 
uh, various materials available. We have aluminum, we have aluminum tube and we have polycarbonate tube, so for flexible stuff. And then we have various gussets for calm application, expandable system, and fun note, we started the Versa framing was based off our robots back in 2011. So we would have teams come up to me like, why do you have a ton of holes? Because when you have a ton of holes, you can move parts, you can try stuff out, you can be creative, right? So our goal is to allow students to try different things out in the prototyping stage, in the final stage. So and and there's been so many events we've gone to where we're like, dude, we need to slap some stuff off, but there's no there's no holes in the robot. So the the Versa framing is pretty flexible, it's a modular system. And why and why I recommend it more than T slot, because T slot weighs more, bends easily, and doesn't stay in place. Our first robot in 2006, we would go out to champs and every match we had a sledgehammer, just beat it back into place. Cause they would go from this to like this and then back to this and then this. So um, we moved on from that. So a while back. Any questions about the Versa framing, gussets, any cool stuff? You can make your own stuff too, so. Subs and gearboxes, um, who doesn't use a Versa planetary? Is anyone that uses the Mark equivalent? Oh, we're trying to change. I'll change too. <laughs> change is good, change is good, change is good. Um, so I think one of the stable products for Vex Pro, um, I see a lot of teams that don't use Versa planetaries and I'm like, oh, we should take a look at them. So uh, cool thing Versa planetaries, you can use a ratchet, um, you can use an encoder, you can use dual input, you can quick change your ratios. I know for all of our prototypes, we use Versa planetaries because we can go from like a three to one all over to 100 to one in about a minute. If you're my kids, about an hour, but, but, uh, but normally with anyone that knows what's going on, about a minute or two to switch out the ratios. I think this, I think the quick change of ratio is probably the best feature ever because I don't know about you guys, but we used to make stuff and then be like, crap, we need a seven to one instead of a five to one. And then we would spend all day remaking the parts. So I definitely recommend using versus planetaries where you don't know the final speed. I know I talked to Mike on Citrus a multiple times and he's like, yeah, my kids love versus planetaries because we switched the roller speed like 30 million times and then decide on the same one after we change them. So. <laughs> but that's something that, you know, fun times, right? So there's also a flipped option, there's mobile motors, and then we sell the new Versa Planetary Lights, which are available in plastic if you want to save weight. And I saw some teams this weekend using those. I was kind of impressed with them. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Any questions on these sets of stuff? Why they're useful, anything? Man, no questions today, huh? Um, my, okay, so my favorite products. I love the Versa Rollers, I love the flexible stuff. So. Our, our, so even with our intake this year, so our goal was to touch it, own it this year for our team. Um, I'm sorry, the poof intake was, the goal was to touch it, own it aspect. And so there's two options that we sell that we kind of that we kind of go over. So Versa rollers are the hot dog rollers, if you know them like that. So they're easy to make rollers. You can press on the end plugs. You can drive with sprockets and pulleys. Pretty cool stuff. And then we sell a bunch of flexible stuff that just came out recently. And the reason why I recommend those, they're made of silicon rubber instead of the normal Buna N or the TPU stuff. So they don't rip. They're made with like some sticky stuff. So like our factory pretty much takes the roller and like injects it with like a sticky residue. So they're pretty dope. But the ones you have in front of you for stress relieving aren't sticky because I don't know, they're an earlier batch. You can't sell them, you know? So uh, any questions on this stuff while we sell them? What's up, man? The hot dog rollers? Uh, you never seen the poof bot? Like, so last year, so like you know, like on the hot dogs, you put the hot dog on the rollers, kind of spin. You remember know, fast food? No, no, like no, like if you go like a like a like a like a yeah, give, give it to him. Yeah. 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 So if you want, put some weenies on it, you know? Um, so, yeah. so so we obviously make a bunch of cool stuff. Um, the reason the Versa rollers and flex tools are so important to me personally is we spend so much time with intake objects. I'm assuming you guys spend a lot of time trying to pick up these darn cubes, or not really cubes, they're like a rectangle, I guess. But they're a pain in the butt to pick up this year. And like, they're kind of painful, right? So how many? Te so what was the hardest part for you guys picking up game objects this year? What was something you guys struggled with? What's up? What did you struggle with? Uh, oh, yeah, we do too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Nothing else? Just intaking sideways? Okay, we solved the problem by bigger wheels. But, um, but yeah, yeah. So, kind of a cool product. Recommend it. Um, how many people actually know what Thunderhex is here? Hey, most of you guys. That's cool. So, we get this email all the time. They're like, well, What's Thunderhex? So we're like, oh, well, you know, it allows you to put a, a hex hole, a hex 
shaft into a round hole, basically. The corners are rounded. Um, we use half inch checks everywhere. Does anyone have a good reason why? Why not use 3 8 or 7 16 or 1 inch or some other sizes? Anyone? Anyone? I hear a lot of rumbling. What's going on? Zach, why, why, why do you use half inch checks everywhere? No comment? Dan, that's how you know he doesn't really mentor our team, by the way. <laughs> Gary, what do you got? What's up, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah, compatibility and strength. So the number one rule is the compatibility is really well worth it. Um, and compatible with all the rollers, collars, sprockets, pulleys, whatever you name it. Um, we used a lot. We used to use a lot of three A text and a lot of random sizes, keyways. We got rid of them because it was just a pain in the butt. It's hard to stock this stuff. It's hard to get everything made together. It's just a lot of work for FRC application. Half inch hex is the way to go. And if you never use thunder hex, buy a bunch of it or turn on a lathe yourself. It's kind of a cool product. I really like it. Um, I don't know how many times, how many, how many nights before getting a half inch hex shaft into a half inch hex bearing, how painful that is. I know there's multiple times we've yelled at each other like, dude, can you get in the hole? No, I can't get in the hole. So there's been multiple times that happened. Hey, so. Anyways, great tea. Hey, you got Adam today. So another another cool product that we're gonna highlight tonight is the great tea stuff. Um, it's so great. So Adam, so dog. Um, We'll be offering, um, I, I know Adam's been working on various solutions for the 2019 season. Um, I know a lot of people are like, they have mixed reviews about Great Tea, but one of the reasons why Adam and even we were okay selling it was we wanted to make sure teams have a level playing field. We get emails all the time, the team's like, dude, I don't even know what to buy. I don't know what a bearing is. You're like, really? I don't know what a bearing is. But fair question, right? You gotta start from somewhere. So we offer a lot of solutions with the roller claw and the elevator. It's not designed to be like the end all be all, but if you have no idea what you're doing or need some help, definitely a good place to go look. And you know you don't have to purchase it. We have all the cat files online. I know next year we're looking at, like turd shooters, some hood stuff. I don't know what the game object is, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun next year. So, at the minimum, look at the CAD. Um, the goal is not bolt on, and then it needs some customization. So, oh, that's it for me actually today. So, do you have any questions? What we got going on? Since you're all here, you probably want to ask what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we sell. Um, we're one of the biggest FRC suppliers, so we sell everything from. Um, I guess we could do website stuff. Website. website stuff. Yeah, this is website stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess the new URL will be this. Oh, you blocked it. Dirty. Oh, I thought you left it open. My bad. So this is the this is the current site. The this is a little smaller. So pretty much we sell everything from, I guess, you can see the categories. So we sell a bunch of stuff based on what you want. Um, we're here locally in California. What's up? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah, take it, whatever you need, man. Um, whatever you want. So you're welcome to. But yeah, we sell a bunch of different stuff. And then, yeah, what's up, man? What do you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We offer the great tea stuff. If you look at the, uh, I think it's menu, structure, uh, great tea mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah, so we have claws and great tea stuff, so you can look through that. So, what's up, man? Okay. Okay, so we don't have tutorials for everything, or not a whole lot of tutorials, but I guess the way to look at it, I know I know there's a, the compassalliance.org, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, compassalliance.org. They have a bunch of cool stuff on there, and they have a lot of recommendations, or try, start building some of the stuff. I like start from square one, start at the first chassis level, start buying stuff, start taking a look at it, or see what you got. What's up, man? So, uh, people can buy right? Technically, yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So. Okay. So, but so we we get that a lot. So we get that we get a lot of customers are like, hey, well, what's the point? Why do you just buy everything and skip a step? So, the problem is we use the off season. So our team uses the off season a lot to purchase, machine, buy, whatever. We do various different things. So when you do the elevator, because we have a team out of Hawaii this year. 
they bought the elevator, right? So normally this team goes to every event and goes zero and 10, and they went on to one event. This year they bought the elevator, they went through the first event, they competed, they made it to Worlds, they had a great time. So they said, while they did not learn how to machine the elevator, they helped them on other aspects. They, they could build the robot, they could compete, they actually drive around, do meaningful tasks. Their alliance members weren't rude to them because they could actually do stuff. So it taught other things beyond, beyond the machining. So while it did not help in the case of like machining, it allowed them to do everything else in the program well, right? So a company doesn't make money because, or if I look at FRC, I look at each individual team as a business. So you got to decide whether you have the ability to do that. There's a lot of businesses that don't make anything that all they do is buy stuff. There's a lot of businesses that make everything but don't buy anything. So there's a rate, there's a, there's a trade off in everything. While I agree that on our team, we build half the robot probably and buy the other half. So that's where we're at with us. So. On our team, so our teams, um, we're pretty unique. So we have, the school loves us. We get a ton of money every year. Um, we make a lot of our stuff. So we have CNC mills, routers, lathes, manual lathes, manual mills. So if you were an intro team buying new stuff, I would only buy a router and a lathe and buy the rest or whatever. But most of our parts are machined. All of our tubing is machined. I think all the guys in the back of the year, our parts are tubing is machined. Most stuff is bought. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. Like you go to the intake right here. We machined only the blue items on this intake, and everything else was bought. And the shafting was slightly machined. So, what's up, man? Did you guys do sell mag encoder? We okay. So new product. We will not be selling. So we don't sell mag encoder, but we're gonna sell a new a new encoder called the Mag Mini. It's three quarter diameter. It allows absolute and incremental output, and it'll come in a hex encoder form. A uh, ball bearing version and the encoder itself so that's kind of a new product that we'll have this year so for teams that struggle with encoders you can put an encoder over any half inject shaft so we'll have that out this year what's up uh you just click the gray t and then you go to the bottom so if you click the gray t you can go to the bottom and then click tech specs and then if you go to the bottom you'll see some recommended configurations and elevator model so and you can build your own stuff. You don't have to like buy it. Like I'm not trying to push everything to be bought from us, but you can do your own things. But it's a good resource beyond bending the wheel. All the stuff that we've made over time that we sell is stuff that we used. So it's kind of hard game by. What's up? You said potentially like pad style available. Yeah. Is the elevator? Yeah. How many of your how much of your stuff has CAD files? Mostly everything. I think the only thing that doesn't have CAD files, maybe like the hand tools. But we try to do a CAD file for every single component, ideally. That's our goal, right? Our goal is for people to do what, what they want, right? What's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, so all the, all the files are available to, like, download. You don't have to buy anything. So, you, so even if you didn't want to, like, even if you didn't, for somebody to like us, which I hope you do, uh, you could download every single model possible. So, and, and I know there's a couple items that we print. Like, we don't buy some of the police sometimes, and we'll print them out later. So, What's up? Any other questions? You guys are all here today, so. What do you guys got? Anything funny? I have nothing. What's up? What do you think your plans for a turret shooter? A turret shooter? Uh, nothing. It's like if, well, basically, like we'll have like a, I think we're going to work with Adam on it, but we'll have like a turret shooter for this season. And it's going to make a large plate, some custom bearings, and then like design for the object. So, whatever it is. No. <laughs> even, even, even if I did, I couldn't say anything. So. So, no, no one. I wish. So. You gotta have SolidWorks or some CAD program like on shape. You can you can definitely bug one of my kids or something later on. If you come by our pit, you can bug one of the kids. So what else we got? I'm not happy for an hour, but I think we're at 30 minutes, like 20 minutes left. Anything we want to call it early? Any other random questions? What's up, man? Compliant wheels, what are compliant wheels? We don't sell compliant wheels. The flex was the old ones? The Buna, the, the water jetted ones? Yeah, we do. We have them like a discontinued item or something. But yeah, you can buy them. Anything else? I'm sure you guys want to learn something from me. What do you guys got today? What about the Wolfpack guys, nothing? 
No, you guys just listen because Jack told you to come by. <laughs> Anything? If not, I'll let you guys go. And you guys go ahead and ask me questions individually if you want as well. Nothing? Share my email again? Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what is it, present? Oh, yeah. So, if you have any email, if you have any questions, concerns, whatever, need help, email me at rca at and I gladly help you guys out. So. Hey, you guys lost a lot of CRV knowledge from Oh, yeah. If you're at Matt Down Thread, I'll be going to show you the shop. Mr. Valmonte will give you personal tours. I will. He actually will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think we'll see a, a, quite a few of you teams out there, right? I think we'll see. We're, we're yeah, we'll see 5940. What's up, man? Third down? Oh, it's in Madeira. It's like the smallest town possible, but it's like. It's like Fresno. It's like Fresno. Yeah, yeah. So, anything? Nothing else, guys? Otherwise, you guys are good to go. Hey, what's up? Hey, see, 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 guys. Have a good one. Future products. We'll have the swerve this year. Um, we'll have some flip gearbox stuff. <laughs>